as they were working their way gingerly through this minefield of mutuality, the front door opened, then explosively slammed. The fanlight rattled, the stairs reverberated, and Carl's bedroom door provided the final report that an adolescent was in the house. Michelle became acutely aware of him. My sweetie, my honey, sitting up there on the end of his bed, disdaining the pastel-painted work unit, complete with personal computer, ignoring the framed posters of Tintin book covers on the candy-striped walls, instead pawing it again through the box of kiddie stuff that he brought with him from Gospel Oak. Shabby memorabilia of a time before he moved up in the world. An incredibly battered hulk, some broken Beyblades, a toy London cab driven by a faceless plastic cabbie. Stuck through the window of the cab was a shard of plastic the size of Carl's middle finger. Why, it should be talismanic. He'd long since forgotten. He could not recall his father demolishing the telephone with its own receiver, nor himself dutifully collecting the bits and storing them in his toy box. A small archaeologist of the immediate past 